Good morning. Thank you for joining with me in this morning devotion. We're talking about surviving spiritually in the coming days. I've been sharing 10 critical actions that can enable us to prepare for the coming storm, and it is in service. So please subscribe so you can follow through every day. Just as God prepared Joseph long before the drought hit Egypt, so God is willing to prepare each of us individually so that together we can bear witness of His power and glory, no matter what envelopes the environment around us. Let us be faithful, take heed, and work while it is yet day before the night comes and no man can work, says the Lord. The second action that will enable us to prepare for the coming storm is meditate in the scripture continually. Meditate in the scriptures continually. Whenever you are bearing heavy cross of some kind, your fervent desires are being denied or you are forced to remain in an unpleasant situation for months just like we are in through this pandemic or years perhaps. You can survive by continually praying that God will release you into more pleasing circumstances. When you are doing this, be sure to thank the Lord for your blessings. You can carry your cross successfully if you get your mind off what you do not have and think about what you do have, the good things God has given you. If you do not do this, but think only about what you cannot have, you cross, your cross will grind you to powder, believe me. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, Philippians 4, 6. Give thanks always to the Lord, and always let your request be made known to Him. Remain faithfully in your prison. But put your hopes beyond the grave, your treasures in heaven, and pray, and pray, and pray, and do not faint, but keep on praying. Then Jesus told his disciples in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. We must set aside a place and time to pray each day. As I said, but in addition to this, we must keep on praying during the day and night as we have opportunity. Pray continually. In First Thessalonians, that's what it says in chapter 5, verse 17. To the beginning Christian, the idea of praying continually may seem an impossibility. As we mature in the Lord, we find that there are so many problems that praying continually is the only way in which we can endure the day. God sends problem upon us to keep our eyes focused on Him. When we face a problem, we can accuse other people and become bitter. Or we can use the problem to drive us to God. Thus, every problem and crisis becomes a golden opportunity to press closer to Jesus. I understand that viewing problems in this manner seems idealistic and unworkable. I admit it does take character, efforts, and courage to look always to Jesus, especially when something of a threatening nature takes place. But every time we respond to a crisis or problem by going to Jesus, we become stronger in this procedure. Life become much more peaceful and less threatening because we find that the Lord keeps on delivering us. It becomes increasingly real to us until we can tell when victory has gained, been gained to us. So if we do not learn to take every crisis, danger and problem to Jesus immediately, looking to Him for strength and wisdom, we will not be able to stand in the dark days facing us in America or whatever nation you are in. The written word of God is of tremendous importance. 
However, the apostles placed prayer as the highest priority. In Acts 6, 4, they said, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. The first of the ten practices necessary for spiritual survival in the coming days is that of prayer. Numerous evangelical Christians do not pray enough even to cope with the present distresses. If we cannot live the victorious Christian life in the present hour, what shall we do when greater trouble comes? If we have raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in safe country, how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? That's in Jeremiah 12 verse 5. God will reward you richly if you make a practice of daily prayer. Try it and say it. Now, maybe some of you were asking, what is the difference between meditation of the word and prayer as the two can be hard to, to distinguish? In scripture or through the scripture while reading the scripture, God speaks to us. While in prayer, we speak to Him. What God says to us prompts us what we say to Him. To meditate, to muse, then, is to think deeply about what God has said to us in the Bible and to prepare our minds and hearts for prayer. Scripture is the foundation of our praying, while meditation readies us for it by helping us Focus, understand, remember, and apply. Now let us see how meditation readies and prepare our minds and hearts for prayer. Meditate to focus. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Psalm 119 verse 15. Whether we read the Bible in the morning, or over our lunch break, or before bed at night, our schedules and responsibility tends assail us with distractions. In fact, distractions are a tool the enemy of our souls uses to take our eyes off Christ and to keep us from hearing God clearly in His Word. In Psalm 119, that the psalmist fixes his eyes on God's ways. As a wayward human with many pursuits, temptations, and people vying for our attention, we are greatly helped by meditation which leads us to fix our eyes on the Lord and tune out distractions even if only for five or ten or more minutes. Focusing on what we are reading in the Bible provides us clarity when we enter into prayer. Meditate to focus on how God is speaking to you through His living and active Word. How meditation readies and prepare our minds and hearts in for prayer is through meditation of the word it helps us to understand in Psalm 119 verse 27 make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous works we meditate on the Word of God we seek to understand and how the God of the universe is speaking about himself about our world about our own hearts, we can begin our Bible reading by praying along with the psalmist, make me understand your way. God delights to answer this prayer. Some questions to ask during meditation includes, why is this passage important? What do I need to know? What does it say about God? What does it say about me? How does this reading point to Jesus? Meditation. Help us to pray. Let us, Father, we thank you and bless you. May this devotion, Lord, help us to see you, Lord, in all things. Help us to pray and meditate on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless and see you tomorrow.